Hey everybody, how's it? This is Jeeves here, your old composer here at the Decomposer Lounge with a brand new band here on the Decomposer Lounge of Men and Mice. And the song I'm going to be doing is Would You Still Be There? Will you still be here after you listen to this track? <laughs> now, I have had, I've heard of the band, I think through uh, um, shows like Nick Nocturnal and uh, Punk Rock NBA. And I've actually got, when I looked it up on my list, there was quite a few suggestions for it, but my list is not a list, it's a scroll that just is infinite. Uh, so I decided that before the holiday uh, break, I was going to drop this on you. I will come back next week after uh, the Christmas, uh, after Christmas Day. But uh, for a few days, I'm going to chill out like I'm hoping you're going to do too. You might not have a choice to chill out <laughs> if you're going to be, if you live in the uh, continental U.S. Because uh, I hear you guys are getting kind of hammered right now with a little bit of some chill. But uh, hopefully this will heat you up. So let's do this. This is a song from Of Men and Mice, and the track is Would You Still Be There? All right. What a trippy mix on this. Super powerful, but it's the chugginess of the track is really getting center stage on this. I mean, if, when you're listening to it in the cans especially, that, that even, even through the verse, that chug is in your face. But did you notice how I was doing this little arpeggiation thing? They have right behind the vocalist this really super cool arpeggiation. They kind of introduce it, I think, at the beginning of the track, um, except they have that really super cool uh, effect that they kind of make it sound like it's coming out of a megaphone kind of vibe. Um, but the fact that the, one of the, well, first of all, I thought, I thought, um, I thought the very second word was the F word. You know, I was like, whoa, they're coming in hot and heavy. I realized because of the fact that it was affected, that little section, that it wasn't. But I think it was the, I have the, the F in words. I was like, well, all right, let's go. Um, but the chuggy sound, the chugginess of the, of, of the rhythm is really front and center. Really super hooky track. And I just noticed this is only, you know, three, a little over three minutes long. So maybe this is one of those tracks that was targeted for like radio play. Um, but really chuggy, really. <clears throat> and also the, the, the vocals, though the melody is, is discernible, there's no two ways about it, it's also kind of tucked in the back. And also the EQing of the drums. I, when the toms came around, I went, oh, that's kind of a trip. It wasn't bright and punchy in your face. I, I just did like a baby metal thing and everything was like kind of overdone in production. You know, everything was bright and, and sterile kind of sounding and stuff. This was, ha this has, you know, some life to it and stuff, but let's go on.
I was going, ooh, I love the sound of the bass at the very last note that he hit. You can uh, hear the, uh, the rattling of the string at the end of that. I like that. That was really cool. That, <coughs> I think it was great that they didn't chop it out, you know, which they could have. They could have gotten away with just, you know, muting that out there on that downbeat and let the cymbal carry over. Um, so one of the cool things that was happening in the bridge uh, that I heard there is they really liked, it sounded like they were really using the ninth in the chord uh, all the way through the chord changes, which sometimes, which gives, which can give it a really joyous kind of vibe. But if you're going a little bit in the darker keys of a scale or something like that, it gives you this kind of intimidate, intimidating or kind of, uh, not dissonant, but just a unique twist in the chord changes. His voice is sick, man. I just, I don't know. It's just this whole, this whole journey that I've been on for the last couple of years and, you know, what was rock singing in the seventies, in the early eighties to what's happening now and the, and the abilities and the clarity of the voices and the power of the darker, heavier parts of a vocalist is just a mind numbing. Um, but this track was really fully super constructed to really drill that hook in you. I mean, it's in. It's, you know, three times in under three minutes and uh, just really super sick, super catching stuff. This was really kind of a cool thing for a Friday for me because now I'm going to be I got to go out and do some yard work before I do some shopping. So I'm going to be uh, ripping that melody through my head. So that was of Mice and Men. And the song was Would You Still Be There? Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Will you still be here next year? <laughs> ah, that, this journey has been really, really fun. And God, I got, I, I think I'll do a year end message just about the trippiness about everything that's happened and the trippiness I might uh, allow myself to trip into, you know, for 2023. So you guys take care of yourself. Thank you so much. Have a great holiday. If you're still here, type in, I'm still here. If you're drinking your cup of coffee or your beer or whatever it is that you're, you know, doing to chill out, just enjoy it. Pull an extra fatty for me. Take that extra sip for me. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I, I cheer you guys for this weekend and, and for the holidays. You guys take care. I'll see you later. All right.